Looks like we're going. You know what? Got to do build monitor. Hello, solemn peace. Robert Graham, how are we doing? Let me know that you are seeing this. That means we are up and running. And I believe we are. I believe we are, but it takes at that delay, at that solid delay. All right. While we're doing this, I'm going to get this squared away. We've got, we've got a fun show. We've got a fun show. We're starting off with a good topic today. Lori Light. Oh, she is so bad. Okay. A couple more things I'm going to handle here. All right. Let me know. On the chat, we are live and we are a going. Because I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's do this. Okay. Can we just go. We just do this. How's your guys' Taco Tuesday going? Taco Tuesday, pretty good. That's what we're doing, right? Then we got Wacky Wednesday. We got Thirsty Thursday. Okay, I believe we are all thumbs up, two thumbs up. Let's do this. Lori Lightfoot has been hired to investigate the worst mayor in America, Tiffany Henyard, at four hundred dollars per hour. Now. When I first saw this, I thought, there's no way. Somebody's screwing with me. This is an April 1st Fool's joke, right? April Fool's. You guys did send me a handful of those. Nope, this is not. This is legit. 400 an hour from Beetlejuice. Checking out Tiffany Henyard. Oof. Yeah, let's get into it. Here we go. I'm going to watch a little video. Who doesn't want to watch a little video on this? Nothing crazy, but yeah, it's, it's just wild. It, and it, yeah, it's the Twilight Zone. It's the Twilight Zone. It's like, you see this article and you're like, I'm sorry, what? How is this possibly, how is this possibly happening? Because didn't Lori Lightfoot literally just get, uh, she didn't even make it through her, her primaries. She got just absolutely blasted in the last election. And yet here she is, she's, she's just going to be, you know, doing some oversight of another bad mayor. I don't get it. Whatever. <laughs> mm. 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 So if I hadn't seen this video, I, I would have I would have called BS on this storyline. I would have just said, there's no way. That's an April Fool's joke. There's no way. But you know what? It's not. Oh, wait a minute. Gosh darn it. Here we go. When the four present trustees get you that voted to appoint the former Chicago mayor. mayor. Lori Lightfoot hired tonight by the village of Dalton. And the village's embattled leader was not at tonight's meeting where the decision was made. WGN's Jenna Barnes is joining us now live from Dalton tonight. Jenna. Yeah, Ray and Micah, it is official. Lori Lightfoot begins her work here in Dalton tomorrow after the board of trustees voted to hire her as a special investigator into Mayor Tiffany Henyard. Motion passed. You can hear it there. Huge applause from the crowd when the four present trustees voted to appoint the former Chicago mayor and former federal prosecutor. Two trustees and Mayor Henyard did not attend tonight's meeting. Lightfoot will be paid $400 an hour with what the trustees call a check-in at $30,000 on the list of issues she will investigate. Henyard's trip to Las Vegas, including spending on that trip and reports of misconduct, hiring contractors without requests for proposal, paying vendors without a 
approval and paying the village prosecutor, <laughs> Michael Delgado, more than $900,000 over the course of two years. Tonight, the board said he threatened a lawsuit if Lightfoot was hired as legislative counsel, so they changed her title to special investigator. It's important to note that neither this board nor Lightfoot can bring actions in criminal court. This is a fact-finding mission, but they say they'll turn over any relevant facts to the proper authorities. The residents of Dalton deserve nothing less than a government that is fully accountable, responsive, transparent, and effective stewards of your precious tax dollars. I'm sorry, but isn't isn't that why Lori Lightfoot was not reelected for those exact same reasons? But anyway, you know you know what? Let's not get bogged down in details, okay? There was some skepticism from members of the public tonight who asked questions. They're wondering if Lightfoot can get information they haven't been able to get. They say they have been stonewalled. Lightfoot says if Henyard doesn't cooperate, she's willing and prepared to do what's necessary to get the facts, although she didn't say what that would be. Maybe she has more authority to get what we're missing to seal this deal and take our community back. There were actually two meetings here tonight. The Lightfoot meeting was the second meeting. The first meeting was a continuation of last week's Board of Trustees meeting. And there, the trustees voted to override Henyard's veto of their resolution calling for a federal investigation into her. They say they believe she will veto the Lightfoot hire, too, but they're prepared to override that as well. We're live in Dalton tonight. Jenna Barnes, WGN News. Oh, oh Chicago. Chicago just has so many storylines going on that you're like, um, what are we doing? What's, what's going on here? How's this going? I mean, okay. So let's get back. Let's get back to, don't need these for a second. Let's get back to the story went is the city council for lack of a better word. They went ahead and said, all right, we're going to, need a federal investigation on just what's going on with, with our fearless mayor. She's pulling some shenanigans. She's got some crazy stuff going on. There was a, um, a fact finding mission to Las Vegas. Now with, with, with township money, that's just a terrible idea. Number one, that's just a terrible, awful idea. Somebody got sexually assaulted at that meeting woke up and they're like, Oh, I am in this room. And why am I no clothes on one of those deals? Right. What happened last night? Okay. He either had a great night. He had a terrible night. Right. I mean, one of those two things. And it's being said that there's all these different things where the Tiffany uh, Henyard is basically using, you know, township funds for whatever it is that she wants to spend them on a whole bunch in security for a dude. Yeah. I mean, the stories just keep going on and on and on. So the township, Dalton, they said federal investigation and Tiffany said veto. And then the township's going to override that. That's one of the, one of the stories they're talking about. They're, they are thinking that Tiffany Hanyard is going to veto hiring Beetlejuice as the investigator here. How we come up with Beetlejuice as the investigator? She is an attorney. But why aren't they turning this over to like the um, the attorney general? I mean, if 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 you really think it's that bad, you know, do you need an inside investigator? However, that is, I don't know. The whole thing to me is just like, what you're doing? What? How how is this gonna go? Yeah. Well, let's read about it, right? Let's get into it. Make sure you guys can hear me. The Illinois village of Dalton has voted in favor of a resolution to hire ex mayor. Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot to investigate its own leader, uh, Tiffany Henry, who was accused of misusing taxpayer funds and various other corrupt practices. She's holding people out of, uh, you know, public meetings. She's been accused of sending the police to basically shut down businesses that did not donate to her. Shenanigans galore. She dressed like a gangster, straight up dressed like a gangster, <laughs> which isn't a crime, but it kind of, kind of takes you where we're going, which is there's just a lot of tomfoolery going on here. We, we've just got 
Lightfoot, who lost a re-election bid in a landslide slide last year. I mean, she wasn't even close, not even a distant third. She was so far back, it was just embarrassing. Said that she was honored to be tasked with the investigation of Henyard, Dalton's self-proclaimed super mayor. She literally calls herself the super mayor. I am a super mayor. Do not question me. As someone who has made good governance the cornerstone of my career in public service, this is Lightfoot talking. All right, good governance. But then you were literally ousted from being mayor in a routing. I mean, it just wasn't even funny. It was just, it was so far beyond because the constituents of Chicago said, you're not good at this. You're not good at, you have run the city into the ground. And, but hey, anyway, let's hire her for 400 bucks an hour. I I could go wrong here. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. Lori Lightfoot goes on to say, I recognize that maintaining the trust of those, uh, of those you serve and making decisions in their best interest is essential. That's why you voted me out of office, but let's do this anyway. Plus, it's 400 an hour. Now, is 400 an hour, I know you guys are going to jump on that. Is 400 an hour ridiculous? Not for a good attorney, but are we saying she's going in as an attorney here, or is she going in more as a private investigator? It's hard to say. We don't really know what the results, you know, they're looking for. And I don't think they know what the results they're looking for. They are looking for some kind of confirmation from the outside, from a disinterested third party, that there are shenanigans going on in Dalton. And I don't think anybody can say, oh, no, that's, that's just a political deal on the mayor. Now, you got too many people questioning too many different things. Plus, Tiffany Hanyard has just, she's gone down some roads where she's just done what she's wanted to, what she wanted to, and she just says stuff. You know, she tries to answer questions in a way that makes her seem not guilty, but it just makes her seem all the more guilty. You're like, all right, yep, she did it. She's guilty. All right, next. But she's got this position as super mayor where she's just calling the shots. As someone who has made good governance, okay, we talked about that. Lightfoot said in a statement Monday evening, there she is, Tiffany Henyard in all of her glory as mayor of Dalton. I'm sure this is going to end up well. I mean, she does some rap songs sometimes, you know, in the the council meeting. She'll have like a big boom box brought in and she'll do a little dance and now we're getting down. But yeah, you know what we're not doing? We're uh, we're not governing Dalton. Well, yeah, that's why they want to have an investigation with um, with Lori Lightfoot. Yeah, she's free. She's free. Plus, she's former attorney. The residents of Dalton deserve nothing less than a government that is fully accountable, responsive, transparent and effective stewards of taxpayers' dollars. Those were some of the issues that I think um, Lori Lightfoot had, and that's why she's no longer mayor of Chicago. Now we've got Let's Go Brandon Johnson. I mean, now we've got Let's Go Brandon. I mean, he is, oh, he provides a lot of content. Let's just say that. If you can't say something nice, don't say it at all. Well, yeah, not exactly. Lightfoot said that her experience leading Chicago would help provide findings and recommendations without bias. Hmm. I, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I don't know. You bring somebody from the West coast in, I'd be a little bit more comfortable there from the whole bias thing. Bring somebody in from your own backyard that knows all the stories that hears all the stories because it's their backyard. Yeah. Where is Dalton? Dalton is to the South. I think like half an hour, half an hour South of downtown Chicago, something like that. It's, it's a, it's a suburb type uh, village, right? Dalton's Village Board voted to hire Lightfoot on Monday night in an unofficial meeting being held at an off-site park district facility rather than the Dalton Village Hall because the mayor makes a mess of the meetings at the Dalton Village Hall. Lightfoot will be tasked with providing periodic updates to the board on the investigation into Henyard's alleged misconduct and Lava's spending, providing a comprehensive report at its conclusion. Is former mayor... is is a former mayor who's got a background in law. Is that your best bet for another mayor? I mean, I'm just, I'm just asking for a friend. I don't know. That just the whole thing. When, when I saw this title, I thought number one, well, that's just nonsense. It's April fools. Um, (laughs) but it's not, it's not. You guys sent me like three articles that were all April fools. Hey, Sean, we want you to read this one. So here's the, here's the key, folks. 
if if around April 1st, if you see an article that looks too good to be true, which is what I thought this one was, 400 an hour, there's no, oh, she's an attorney, yeah, okay, all right, all right, this makes sense. But if you read through an article and at the bottom it says, <laughs> happy April Fool's Day, then you kind of know that it may not be, you know, exactly what it's purported to be. There was there were some funny stories that you guys sent me, and I'm not sure that you guys thought they were jokes or you thought they were, I think you guys thought they were real. Anywho, we're going to move past that. That's why I do the fact checking here, right? This one, this this story that I'm live streaming right now, this one could have, this could have gone into that. That's that. We're, are we just living in the upside down now? What? I'm sorry. Who who picked her? Who picked Lori Lightfoot? Lori Lightfoot must have made herself available, or she must have contacts out there saying, "Hey." You know, I'm a hired gun. I'm ready to go. And I'm, I don't know anything about her investigative abilities, but the constituency that, you know, voted her in really voted her out in such a way that it makes you kind of wonder if, uh, if Lori Lightfoot is the, uh, the best person to, uh, to, to, you know, put in charge of this endeavor. Time will tell. We shall see. Is this an easy enough case where, where Beetlejuice can get it? Can she figure it out? Can she get some, you know, solid facts as to what's going on? The investigation stems from a series of events surrounding a tax-funded economic development trip to Las Vegas in May 2023. All right, let's talk about that for just a second. An economic development trip to Las Vegas. What do you think Dave Ramsey would say about that? What would Dave Ramsey say about that? You guys are going to go study economic development in Vegas? That seems rather unlikely. That seems unusual. You can't do that at home in your own library on the internet. Oh, okay. Oh, he just wanted to go and have some fun. What stays and what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Everybody knows that. That's why I think it was it's just a terrible idea to have any kind of company meeting or whatever in Vegas. People, people go there to just let loose and, you know, do things they wouldn't normally do, like cheating on their spouse. Yeah, right? <laughs> Everybody knows it. There was allegedly, allegedly a total failure to report anything relative to potential economic development or any other events that took place in Las Vegas to the Board of Trustees. Hey, what are you complaining about? What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Plus, you guys don't want to know. You guys don't want to know. We did spend some of your money, though. We spent a lot of money. Yeah, we did some gambling. It didn't work out. You know, got some drinks. May have, you know, gone and seen the girls of Glitter Gulch. Don't really, don't. We're not really sure what happened in Vegas, but it sounds like one individual had not a good experience. It's, and um, the village board says it wants a thorough investigation into the trip, including all expenditures, allegations of misconduct, and internal investigations. How did this Tiffany Henyard, how did she think that she was going to get away with all this? Because there's a little thing called a paper trail. And in the political world, you know, you, you, you can do some funny business with the money. You can cook the books a little bit. But, um, yeah, it's, you know, you can't do that en masse. Yeah, let's take a trip to Vegas. I'm sure it'll be fine. Henyard is also facing allegations that she's misspent federal COVID-19 relief funds. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's problematic. That's troublesome. Um, she hired contractors without seeking proper bids. Um, you know. I mean, in New York City, Eric Adams does that. He says, oh, let's get $53 million to this company who's never done this before, and they're going to make up the debit cards and hand them out to the illegals. That happened. So it's not uncommon to have hired contractors, but this is a small village, right? This is a small village. You're going you're gonna to go through. You're going to put everybody who, I mean, you would think that would happen, put everybody through the, the, the grinder of, all right, what can you do for us? How much is this going to cost? How's this going to go? She's got overpaid vendors without approval from the board and accepted large campaign contributions from vendors chosen by the mayor. Uh-oh. That looks like insider dealing to me. The resolution also states, this is a resolution that the village board had off-site not at village off of village board offices because they're afraid of the mayor and what the mayor might do. The resolution also states the board later learned of serious sexual allegations, sexual assault allegations. It's where you should have an investigator. It should be an investigator's job, right? 
made by an unnamed former Dalton employee against a board trustee while in Las Vegas. But I mean, what else did you expect was going to happen? A little hanky-panky? Yep. A little hanky-panky that when you woke up, you're like, oh, good Lord. Or was it somebody literally took advantage of you? Don't know. But Lori Lightfoot, she's going to get to the bottom of it, right? And that Henyard and others in her administration have gone to great lengths to cover up and hide the alleged sexual misconduct and reporting of the sexual misconduct. It's my understanding that is an issue as well. No question about it. No, no. But more importantly, what has happened to all the money that the village of Dalton has had? Where did that money go? This is a spending issue for the most part. But you got to, you know, alleged sexual assault. Well, that paints a different picture as well. It just kind of all goes together, right? Like this is a mayor that um, she's probably not going to get reelected. Let's just say that. Right? Let's just say that. Kind of like Lori Lightfoot. Huh, interesting. Is there a correlation there? I mean, two peas in a pod. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. But this is what they came up with. Hey, Lori Lightfoot's available. Let's have her do some investigating. Us figuring out what happened in Vegas is extremely important for the residents, Dalton Board of Trustees member Brittany Norwood told the Post. If there was a sexual assault, don't the police want to know? I mean, is that not a police matter? Did somebody call the police? Is, has anything been done about this? Do we know anything about this? Or was this just a super hazy, you know, <laughs> uh, party in, or, or event that happened in Vegas? Don't really know, right? Henyard's constituents have also complained about the ostentatious mayor's massive billboards bearing her face across town and the militarization of local police against her political opponents. Yeah, this is not a huge village, and she has had some big billboards. Are there any other kind? Are there small billboards? No, not really. Not really. Bearing her face across town. She's got the right to do that, but um, how many of them? There was a bunch, wasn't there? She's, she's just, she is, she's a bully. She is a political bully. That's, that is how she operates. You don't like what she says? She just basically, you know confronts you straight on and doesn't answer your questions and, you know, rinse, repeat, and she just keeps going. Henyard's administration has denied the board's numerous requests over the past year for financial documents, leaving it in the dark about the state of Dalton's finances. Where's all the money? What happened with all the money? Where'd the money go? Last month, Henyard vetoed a resolution passed unanimously by the village board to open the probe calling on her to submit the village's financial records. Ah, we don't want to do that because there might be some funny stuff on there. Might be some shenanigans. Got to keep that on the down low. We'll just work our way through, you know, that little issue and I'll say a bunch of stuff and we hope the board doesn't do anything rash like hire Lori Lightfoot to investigate. Yeah. The FBI is also reportedly investigating Henyard's alleged misuse of taxpayer money. Ah, huh, you don't say. We covered that one right here on News for Reasonable People, didn't we? The FBI. Huh. Yeah. So, so, we, so we go from the FBI to Lori Lightfoot. Mm, yeah, it gives one a lot to ponder about, doesn't it? Yeah. So we got the FBI uh, investigating Henry's alleged misuse of taxpayer money, including the hundreds of thousands of dollars the village paid in police overtime allegedly for Henyard's personal security detail. This isn't a big village. Everybody knows who she is. She probably knows most of the faces that she sees at these village board meetings, right? So does she really need that much personal security detail? Or, or is one of her love interests maybe, you know, heading up the security detail? A lot of questions, no answered, no answers. But again, I have complete confidence that Beetlejuice is going to get us the answers that we are looking for, that the, the township of Dalton is looking for. Let's go, Lori Lightfoot. That's a triple L, isn't it? Let's go, Lori Lightfoot. Let's go, Beetlejuice. Let's go, Brandon Johnson. Everybody. Get everybody together. So we've got, uh, we've got uh, village paid and police overtime, allegedly, for Henyard's personal security detail. Hmm, yeah, that's, that's problematic. That's sketchy. And accusations she held up licenses to certain businesses. 
I have seen those interviews and it does not look pretty. She basically, she closed down some businesses because they couldn't operate without valid license, right? Just like, yeah, I'm not renewing your license. We're not issuing a new license. Because, um, yeah, you didn't, you didn't support me in the election. So here's to you not having a license. How can I help you? You know what I mean? Just like, uh, Tenured has repeatedly refused to step down. Why should she? Nobody so far has, has checked her. Nobody so far has said the big, no, here's what we're doing. I think you've got a village that, number one, is afraid of her. And I don't blame them. She's an out-of-control bully, right? So when the opportunity to bring somebody in, like Lori Lightfoot, came up, they just kind of said, all right, um, 30K. So let's figure that out. So 1200 bucks every three hours. How much is she going to be able to figure out before she spends that 30000 This shouldn't be all that hard, should it? No. Other than getting to the bottom of what happened in Vegas, which is to me, somebody else, somebody else in law enforcement has to cover that, right? And because otherwise, any information you 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 know kind of rile up, somebody's got to go ahead and uh, and confirm it as well. Plus, those are shenanigans outside of finances, aren't they? Yeah, somebody got raped in Vegas. Ooh, yeah, and it involved a board member and, and somebody else that was there. That's not good, but. To me, that story is just one of so many that you've got going on here. So you've got this layer upon layer upon layer upon layer of just nonsense, nonsense that has happened to the um, village of Dalton. So now you're going to add one more layer of nonsense, which is you got Beetlejuice riding in on the white horse, 400 an hour. She's, she's going to get to the bottom of all this. What do you guys think will happen? You think she'll get to the bottom of it? Will she get enough answers where they can kick Tiffany Henry out? Tiffany Henry, she doesn't want to go. So what's it going to take? A recall? Are they going to do a recall? I don't know. I mean, this whole thing is just, it's so convoluted, especially when you bring in a high-profile person like Lori Lightfoot, and you're just left with, huh, that's an, that's an unusual choice. That's, that's, that's kind of a weird choice. I mean, I get it that she's an attorney, but... Um, yeah, the exact same thing that she's kind of been, she was accused of doing, which was just basically mismanaging the city of Chicago, is exactly, with some more pointed points, what Tiffany Henyard is being accused of. Plus a little bit of sexual assault in Vegas. Eh, it just kind of goes with the territory, though, right? No. It, you don't have company meetings at Ve in Vegas. That's just, that's absolute bottom line. I know it sounds like fun. I know it sounds like a great idea. But um, if you are, um, if you're responsible for said meetings and they go sideways on you, it's not pretty. It is not pretty. All right. I'm going to wrap up this segment. Um, <laughs> what, what do you say to a segment like this? I mean, really? Is, this is what we're doing? This is literally the answer you're coming up with. This person who did that is going to cover this person. Huh. All right. Well. Got to check back in on News for Reasonable People because we will be doing an update. When we get to that 30000 that Lori Lightfoot spent, which shouldn't, be, shouldn't take too long, we'll cover what the updates are because inquiring minds want to know. I hope you enjoyed this segment. On to the next one. All right. For all you people on the live stream, going to see what you guys are talking about. Yeah, criminals defending criminals sounds good to me. That's not... Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, the wolf in the chicken pen, the wolf, the wolf guarding the hen house. Is that what it is? The wolf guarding the hen house? And you're like, um, this just, this, this just makes no sense whatsoever. I mean, some of the stories I read here, they, they don't even really need to be read. You just read the title and you go, oh, huh. Okay. Yeah, this should be an interesting one. We'll just... <laughs> Yeah, this story was way unreasonable. <laughs> it's got to be some kind of joke. Yeah, it's not. We are literally living in the down under. It's crazy. All right, so that's how we're going to start off today. Next one, next one we're going to get into, we are going a little bit more serious. 
We're going to go back to kind of what we've got going on at the southern border. Because right now you are in kind of a flux of a lot of things happening at the southern border. And we're going to talk about them. So let's get into it. All right, Tristan, here we go. Governor Greg Abbott of Texas, he is claiming that Joe Biden used the immigrants, illegal immigrants, as political pawns. So you've got a big back and forth going on right now between Eric Adams, the mayor of New York City, and you've got Governor Greg Abbott from Texas. He's shipping hundreds of thousands of illegals to New York City. And then you've got Biden doing who knows what, saying who knows what about what. Let's get into it. Here we go. I need to blow that up just a little bit here. And we are going to reduce. Don't mind me, I'm just talking to myself. That's pretty, that's pretty close. Let's see how that goes. Nope. Gosh darn it. Sometimes this program gets stuck. Sorry, live stream people. You guys are, you guys are in it for the hall. You're having to deal with what I deal with and what Tristan deals with. What's the guy doing? What's he doing? Why can't he get his screen going? I ask that myself that all the time, right? All right, here we go. And we are off there. Governor Greg Abbott blasted President Joe Biden for using immigrants as political pawns as soon as they entered the United States. You know what? Cut. We're going to watch a little video. We're going to watch the video where Abbott talks about this. It's pretty good. I like watching Greg Abbott talk. He, um, or listening or whatever. Here we go. Eric Adams, Sorry. a former police captain, who greeted the news that Abbott would be in the city yeah. to speak at a GOP in one of the migrant shelters. So he can see what he has created and understand how we are treating people with the dignity and respect that he we'll get I'm to going start to on. offer him a Here stay in one of the Hercs so he can see what he has created and understand how we are treating people with the dignity and respect that he should have shown as well. When we coordinate together, we should not displace problems to local municipalities. That is not what executives do, and it's unfortunate that he made the decision to do. He's talking about uh, Abbott spending a night in a migrant shelter. I mean, what an idiot. All right, that is the mayor's side of the story. Joining us now from Austin is Texas Governor Greg Abbott. Governor, very good to have you with us. Um, the event that I mentioned in New York City was a big GOP fundraiser. I'd like to begin with you by playing a piece of sound of you speaking at that event. This is good. We made clear by contacting his office and said, we're not sending them to New York. That's Joe Biden sending them to New York. But the criticism kept coming, kept coming, kept coming, despite our denial. So after a while, I figured, gosh, if I'm going to get the criticism, I'm going to get the credit. <laughs> and thus began the busing <laughs> of illegal immigrants to the sanctuary city of New York City. Governor, welcome. Um, you know, that comment and the actions that you have taken, which, you know, really changed the game in so many ways with regard to how the rest of the country views immigration. But the mayor said that because of comments like that, you're morally bankrupt and that you're using these individuals as political pawns. What do you say to that, sir? So the, the person who's actually using uh, illegal immigrants as political pawns is Joe Biden. 
Uh, Joe Biden has uh, created this open border policy that has allowed illegal immigrants into our country uh, to uh, appeal to and to appease uh, the far leftist uh, in the Democrat Party, the people like uh, Ocasio-Cortez, and hopes of trying to win their support, uh, while at the same time destroying the country that he's in charge of. He, he is uh, the commander-in-chief in charge of national security for our country. Our country is being invaded in ways that uh, put our country at risk because of the political games that Joe Biden has played. And Mayor Adams is uh, just aiding and abetting that uh, by having a sanctuary city status, welcoming in anybody from across the world to uh, live there or stay there uh, in New York City uh, on the bill uh, of New York City. Uh, and what Mayor Adams needs to do, uh, he needs to stop talking boldly about uh, illegal immigration and the migrants that Texas is sending there. And he needs, he needs to step up and do his own job because look at the dangers in New York City under his watch. You have a police officer who is killed. Uh, you have uh, you, the... the uh, train system in New York, which is treacherous uh, for travelers. Uh, you got uh, police officers attacked in uh, Times Square uh, by illegal immigrants. He needs to step up and do his job uh, as mayor and protect the people of his community, uh, as opposed to gimmicks uh, about what's going on on the border. Well, the polling clearly shows that um, people are... Just the way Abbott talks. I mean, he's just, he's so straightforward that i mean whether you want to believe him or not it's it's hard to get around what he says and you know when you see eric adams he's like ah greg abbott is you know he's doing this as a political stunt well who's who's basically dictating from you know the very top that these illegals are supposed to be coming into the country we know who that is the current administration right so, how, you know, how do you get around that? I mean, that's where it starts. Greg Abbott wouldn't be sending people to New York if the border was secure, period, right? Just period. So when Eric Adams, you know, start, starts talking about this nonsense, remember how long, not too long ago, he was like, this is gonna destroy the city. It's gonna tear the city apart. And now he's like, oh, why don't you come stay in one of our, our, our shelters? Why? I mean, He's got shelters in Texas as well. I mean, same thing there. When, when you bring in millions of people into the country, when that's your MO, they got to go somewhere. And so many of them are saying, I want to go to New York. So, you know, what Texas is doing to me is just genius, especially considering how little money they have spent. There's all these all articles about, oh, they've spent 120 million. They've spent 148 million. They've spent over 150 million. How much does it cost New York City? I mean, those bus rides are cheap. 150 million, tiny percent of Texas's budget. In New York City, how many billion is it costing them? How many billion, you know, millions is it costing uh, Denver? And then you've got Chicago. Yeah, they've all taken in just thousands because this is the top down. This is what you know, our fearless president, our leader of the free world, let them all in. Let them all in. Isn't this great? Isn't this great? They're just letting people in left and right. I don't buy the fact, though, that this is just to appease those on the left. And then, you know, they don't want borders. They don't want cops. They don't want judges. They don't want judicial system. They don't want borders. They don't want any of this stuff. All right. All right. We can't have all of that. But hey, let's just bring in millions of people and we'll see how it goes. Abbott appeared on Fox News Sunday to discuss his recent visit to New York, which has seen a flood of 157,000 immigrants between 2022 and 2023. That's according to the city's mayor, Eric Adams. The Texas governor made it clear that even though he has transported immigrants from his state to the sanctuary city, his state has only sent a small number of the total immigrants who have arrived. Look at these cities. Look at Denver, just basically on its knees begging for life you know, support because there's no more room at the end and the federal funds have, have gone by the wayside. And you literally last week had one of their top officials within the Mike Johnston administration, the liaison to you know the illegals speaking in Spanish <laughs> and, and, and some English to 
the illegals in Denver saying, hey, you got to go to New York City. You got to go to Chicago. You can't stay here. Our resources are done. It's going to be far more dangerous for you to stay here. So these sanctuary cities are just, you know, they're absolutely two-faced. That's the bottom line. Uh, they want a virtue signal, but then they don't want to pay the bill. What's up with that? So, and then you got Greg Abbott going, well, I started this off because we had to get them, you know, to somewhere. If you want them to be in the United States, that's fine. They want to go to these big cities because they think they have more opportunity than the border areas of Texas. Then we're going to ship them there. We're going to ship them there. The person who actually is using illegal immigrants as political pawn is Joe Biden, Abbott said. Joe Biden has created this open border policy that has allowed illegal immigrants into our country to appease and appease the far leftists in the Democrat Party, the people like AOC, in hopes of trying to win their support while at the same time destroying the country that he is in charge of. Somebody made the comment the other day that why are we putting so much emphasis on all of this trans and LGBTQ plus stuff <clears throat> when it consists of less than 1% of the population? Why aren't we doing what the 99% of the population is interested in supporting? What about those rules? What about those laws? What about those levies? What about that? Ah, no, we got to do all this crazy stuff, this crazy train stuff, because it's you know politically advantage, you know, advantageous to do that at the moment. Let people in to the country. That's advantageous, right? Don't put up the wall. Don't put up the wall. Crazy times. New York has received over 40,600 immigrants transported from Texas since August of 2022. A bunch of those will leave, but a vast majority won't. So it, it's kind of like the, the meeting, or not, not the meeting, it was an informal meeting where the um, Mike Johnston official uh, within that administration is talking to the illegals and is basically saying, you know, he asked him towards the end, hey, how many of you guys want a you know, free bus ticket to go somewhere else? We'll fly you, we'll drive you, we'll do whatever to get you out of here. And they all basically stated, we want to stay. If they've made it to one of these sanctuary cities, that's typically where they want to stay. That's where they want to be. That's the big show, right? It's the big show. So meanwhile, Texas takes the brunt of illegal immigration because they're on the border. They're on the border. So you got these knuckleheads up north, like Eric Adams. He doesn't know. I mean, if he had to run, if he had to do what Abbott has done, he couldn't have. He doesn't have the organizational skills. He doesn't have the pull. He doesn't have the support of the entities. I mean, Greg Abbott has got, he's got like five different military entities, you know, that at his beck and call. And, um, you know, they're working in, you know, they're working towards a common goal, which is we're going to secure the border. The federal government isn't. If Customs and Border Protection isn't going to do that, we're going to step in and we're going to do it. So local law enforcement apprehended more than 506,000 illegal immigrants since the start of Operation Lone Star in March of 2021. And how many people, how many illegals have gone to New York City? 150? And you got 500 going through the southern border? I mean, come on now. Come on now. You, 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 these folks must know. They must, oh yeah. It's only a fraction of what Abbott's dealing with. He's got to send them all these folks to, you know, all over. Abbott said that the number of immigrants crossing into the state of Texas is on the decline as a result of his policies. 72% illegal immigration through the southern border into Texas is down 72%. Now, what I'm going to say there is some of that, a large portion of that, is because of efforts of Greg Abbott, governor of Texas. But it also has to do, because we know that a large portion of those that would normally have come through Texas, they are now going through New Mexico. They are now going through California. They're now going into San Diego, right? They are now going into Arizona. How about the number of Chinese nationals flying into Tijuana and then taking a $400 Uber from a, you know, cartel member and he's dropping them off, you know, some, somewhere an hour east of San Diego. What about that? What's going on with that? The number of Chinese, you know, illegals has just skyrocketed. Did a podcast on that yesterday and the number is just way up. Now, what I would also say is the 72% that the number of illegals that is 72% less are coming into Texas now. 
some of that has to do with the China, the um, Mexican government is basically stopping the flow south of their northern border, which is our southern border. They are doing that for the moment. Numbers are way, way down. I think the numbers in March were 160,000 at the southern border, something along those lines. I mean, way, way down from even just a few months ago. So some of that has to do with Mexico. Some of that has to do with te what Texas is doing. But any which way you look at it, pressure is being put away from Texas and the southern border. And it's, um, it's going to be interesting to see how that goes, because that means, yep, California is going to get it. Yep, Arizona is going to get it. New Mexico to a little bit. And then all these sanctuary cities where the folks are going to fan out to. Um, Greg Abbott talks about uh, the new jobs. Um, Texas is leading the nation in employment, right? Just is. So, you know, while he's bringing down illegal immigration across the southern border into Texas, he is at the same time, from an economic development standpoint, you know, he, he's not going to Vegas. He's not having their meetings in Vegas. He's just getting the work done at home. Not that hard to figure out, right? Job-wise, Texas ranks number one for the most new jobs added. So our economy and jobs are growing faster. At the very same time, while illegal immigration into the state of Texas is going down, illegal immigration has gone down 72% because of the resistance we have put up. Those drug smugglers, they only get paid by the cartel. They get their people into the United States and into one of those white vans off to the migrant shelter then from the migrant shelter to whatever big sanctuary, virtue signaling sanctuary city, you know, they want to go to. So it's gone up in the other border states, illegal immigration gone up quite a bit, quite a bit. So Texas is decreasing illegal immigration while at the very same time adding more jobs and growing our economy faster than the entire country. And I believe the rate at speed at which Texas is growing is literally double the rest of the economy. So say what you want about Abbott, the guy's doing work. That's bottom line, right? That's bottom line. Abbott's policies are being challenged in court by Biden's Department of Justice. The governor expressed his confidence that his immigration laws will withstand these challenge, legal challenges. So that is um, Senate Bill 4. So what's happened is it's been enacted, it's been challenged, you know, you got the, what is it? It's either the ninth or the fifth circuit court is taking a look at it. It's under review right now. It's been enacted. It's been, you know, put on hold. It's had a stay put on it. It's going through all of these legal processes. And um, what you didn't see in the video that I played for you is later on in the video, the Fox uh, reporter, uh, the whatever you want to call her, was asking him about that. And he had kind of a roundabout answer of, we're going to keep doing what we're doing because if the feds aren't going to protect the southern border, we will. The feds have a, a duty to, a constitutional duty to protect the United States border. And if they're not doing that, we'll step up and we'll jump on in. And that's what Senate Bill 4 basically does. It allows Texas to arrest with their own police uh, powers to arrest and put them in front of judges and deport them and deport them. How about these stories with Trump saying he's going to deport every, there's going to be a massive deportation on day one of his presidency. I could see something like that. I could see him putting something in order like that. I mean, Biden did. He just stopped building the wall, threw out like 64 executive actions. He's done everything he can to basically screw up our borders. He's done everything he can. Ah, oh, let that go. Nope, don't do that. Don't build the wall. Oh gosh, I guess we got to start building the wall again. You know, you've just got so many shenanigans happening. It's wild. Last month, 137,000 illegal immigrants were apprehended at the 2,000 mile southern border. This is in addition to the more than 10 million migrants. We're up at 10 now. We were at seven. This is a conservative number. It's probably more like 11. And then, you know, get into all the, the gotaways, right? 10 million immigrants who have reportedly entered the country illegally since Biden took office. It's the most recorded in that amount of time of any administration. Then we had 40-year lows. We had 40-year lows in the previous administration. That's why it's such stark contrast, right? It's like, what are we even doing? I did that entire segment on the wrong screen. But you know what? 
That's just what we're doing. We're, we're just, yeah, nobody will know. Shh. Nobody will, nobody will know. Tristan cut all that crap out, okay? And uh, we'll go on with it. All right, so Greg Abbott basically defending himself. Biden, who knows what he's doing? Eric Adams, uh, we got a lot of immigrants in our city. What are we going to do? Abbott is 100% right. When he's talking about, hey, you got to take care of your own house. I mean, what's up with needing the National Guard in your subway system? We just had that happen, right? Got a whole bunch of, you know, Poco, the governor, basically said, National Guard, go get them into the subway system because it's become so dangerous. So dangerous. You got cops getting beaten up. I mean, it's not a good look. And you know what? When you bring this many people into the city that aren't allowed to work, you know, and we don't know anything about them, they haven't been vetted, all of these different things. I mean, literally, you ask yourself, what could go wrong? And that's kind of what we're seeing. So Greg Abbott, he does a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a field trip up to New York City for a Republican fundraiser. And Eric Adams is like, I got him. I've got him. I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really show him. But what Eric Adams doesn't think through is that where does this whole situation start? At the border in Texas, of which Greg Abbott is governor. Where do you want these folks? To, you want these folks to just go across the southern border and stay right there? Is that what you think they're going to do? Because if the feds were doing their job, there wouldn't be any coming in like this. There wouldn't be these massive numbers like this. The numbers would be lower, like they have been in the past. And they followed the procedure. And instead, the last three and a half years or whatever it is, it's been just bring them in, bring them in, bring them in. Yeah. You know, we'll write their name down, a little pad and pad of paper and you know, with some pencil so we can erase it later. Oh, that's not who you said you were? Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Jose, what's your middle name there? Fernando? Yeah, I mean, you know, we're just making stuff up here, but it's been that kind of a debacle with those kind of shenanigans, right? Of just let it bring them in and um, we'll give them a court date in 2031. And people question me on that. They're like, oh, the, 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 those, those court dates aren't that far out. They're, they're two to three years out. Where do you think most of these illegals are going to be by that time? Where are they going to be? Not in the city that they have the court date from, right? And they're literally, we've seen evidence of people with, court dates in 2031. So you've got a whole bunch of stuff kind of in flex right now. You've got that Senate Bill 4. You've got pressure being put on California. You've got pressure being put on the Biden administration for letting all these military-aged single men come into California and then get moved around from there. Like, what's up with that? And just the whole concept of the border you know, we had that $118 billion package that rightfully got shut down because it was a piece of crap and it didn't make any sense. You know, you've got Democrats saying, if you guys were really serious about the border, you would have passed that one. But it had money in it for border protection, all kinds of things. It was a terrible deal. And I'm glad that didn't go through. And that was a try for. That was a try for on Democrats' part to get something through. And guess what? And that wouldn't have been good for the country. It allowed so many to come through and it would have just escalated what the new norm of illegals coming to the country is. And anybody looking at that who saw that said, that's what it is. No go. So of course it got, you know, pushed back. It, there was just like, yeah, it's dead on arrival in the house, right? That was kind of the big thing. So you've got a ton of this stuff going on. Meanwhile, we had into the election season, right? And this is a big, huge topic. So not a lot of new news on the Southern border. You had that one El Paso deal where um, you had a couple hundred migrants in Juarez just across the border get pretty worked up and kind of bum rush the the um, the guards that were there, national guards that were there protecting the El Paso border. You had that happen, and you've had you know a few other things go on like that, but there's been no major, real big, you know, showdowns happen in uh, in the last couple of weeks. It's been much of the same. You've got, you've got Greg Abbott here basically stating exactly what he stated all along, that this isn't, this isn't a Texas problem that Texas is creating. This is a problem from our fearless leader, let's go Brandon, and um, not Brandon Johnson. So, yeah, that's what you've got going on. All right, I'm going to move on to the next segment with Tristan. I'm going to do an outro here at the end for all of these, but um, yeah. 
That's where we sit. Okay, I'll take a peek, see, and see what you guys are talking about up here. Let's scroll. DEI didn't earn it. I think that's one of the funniest sayings that's been going around now. Yeah. Yeah. Resident Potatoes is now dictator. That's true. Yeah, they've all heard New York City is soft on crime. Uh, Dr. Insomnia, absolutely true. Um, we hear, we, we read stories about how the gangsters will come into the United States, do their thing. They'll spend their money in Florida but they'll commit their crimes in New York city because they know that, you know, they'll either get bounced out of the country or nothing will happen to them. Nope. Um, busy girl. Does New York have a poop map yet? I do not believe so. I don't think they know. I know inquiring minds want to know or is San Francisco still in the lead. San Francisco is still in the lead. I had somebody tell me the other day, I was a little bit upset, Sean, with your coverage of San Francisco and the poop map but I understand, but I just want to let you know a lot of the, you know, piles of poop on the poop map in San Francisco, those are from um, irresponsible dog owners, dogs doing their thing and nobody's cleaning up. Mm, mm, shenanigans on that one. I say no, that's, that's just, <laughs> I call nonsense on that. 28 year old men passing as 17 year olds. Isn't that true? What's up with that? I mean, all of these young, I mean, anybody under 30 is young, right? All these young military aged men just roaming around. Ah, yeah. San Francisco, the poop Kings. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Let's move on to our next one here. Our next one, Tristan, here we go. We've got our favorite migrant influencer who encouraged squatting. He is whining to the New York Post that he's a victim of persecution in jailhouse interview. Is this guy, this is the guy that was crying, sobbing, snot hanging down his nose. He was yelling at the camera. If you take over a home, you can legally take it from its owner. All this crazy stuff. Now he's in jail. Ah, he's being persecuted. Hmm. Yeah, imagine that. Let's get into it. Here we go. He is in jail. That is correct. All right. Let's, here's a little bit of an overview. Just a little bit of, just a scooch of an overview. Video of where we sit. I know a lot of people have asked, okay, what's going on with this guy? Here's what's going on with this guy. And his name is Leono Moreno, right? Okay, here we go. He's been nabbed. Nabbed him. Ice. I don't need to see you. You know, offices. Now. Yeah. He skipped out. Mm. Yeah. I haven't seen him. An absconder. Thousand bucks a day begging. guy's a punk and he deserves to be in jail. He deserves to be in prison. He deserves to, but in prison in, where is he from? Venezuela? Send him back to prison in Venezuela. What do you say about that? What do you say? That's what we should be doing. Why aren't we doing it? Because ah, of these soft hearted liberals who are like, ah, love yourself and illegal. Right? Yeah. And then, and then we've got in these sanctuary cities, we've got this hands off 
with ice. Oh, no. The ice can't talk with these illegals. That's how it is in Seattle. They won't, they won't, there isn't a lot of ice around here just because we're not at the border. You don't, you don't see ice around here very often, if ever, right? Probably a little bit further north because uh, you get up near the Canadian border and they've got more to do up there. But um, yeah, you got a situation where if somebody is in jeopardy of being deported, law enforcement here has been given the, you know, they've been dictated, nope, we're not cooperating with ICE because we're a sanctuary city. It's such nonsense. It's just, it is so ridiculous that we live in a world where that's a thing. So you, you got somebody, you know, quasi protecting the southern border. <clears throat> what are they doing? Yeah. Crimea Rio Grande River. Jailed Venezuelan migrant influencer who viciously mocked America to his 500,000 TikTok followers and urged border crossers to invade abandoned houses now misses the glorious liberties he enjoyed in the U.S., whining to the Post this week that, I miss my freedom. Uh, your freedom was stolen there, big guy, because um, you were supposed to show up at a hearing back in 2022, and you did not. You did not follow the rules. Therefore, you do not deserve freedom. And for breaking said freedom, you should be deported. Leonel, Leonel Moreno moaned that he is a victim of unjust persecution. Yeah, that's interesting. Wednesday, during a 30-minute long video televisit from inside Giguaga County Jail in Chardon, Ohio, Guiga, Guiga, how do you pronounce that? Somebody from Ohio, let me know. I came here to the United States because of persecution in my country, but they're doing the same thing to me in the United States, persecuting me, Moreno27 wailed. Well, you know, if you wouldn't have gotten on your big social media platform, namely TikTok, then I think some of this would be a non-issue. But you said that you can go out and just take a house that's in bad shape. You just take a house, you fix it up, and you can sell it, and you can make a profit. You literally said squatting is an answer to creating wealth in the United States. You used your wife, you used your baby as kind of, you know, pawns in this whole scheme of let's see how we can scam some more people on TikTok. So I don't feel too bad. I don't feel bad at all. I don't really care. This guy belongs, he, he belongs in deport land, right? It's all misinformation in the media about me. This is, why, this is why I'm reading this story. It's all misinformation in the media about me. Is it? Is it really? Because, you know, what was in the media about you was the fact that you were just, you were, you were creating content that talked about all this stuff that simply wasn't true, that was illegal. Huh. And now you're being prosecuted, persecuted, whatever you want to call it. They're defaming me. What fame did you have to begin with? Yeah, you came into the country illegally, you scammed a bunch of systems, and you talk about, you know, taking handouts, begging on the corner. I bet you you're one of those people that, you know, uses their kid to bag, kids sitting in a stroller. Who doesn't feel sorry for that? You know, all that kids getting all that uh, the exhaust from cars going by, and it's just sitting there, and, you know, kid doesn't have any choice, and dad is literally using it. They're defaming me. They're misrepresenting me in the news. Oh, I, I, I don't think so. I don't think they're misrepresenting you at all. I think the way you represented yourself is a very accurate portrayal. And the rest of us just kind of look at that and go, eh, yeah, that's a loser. That guy should be deported. I am a good father, a good husband, a good son, a good person, humble, respectful to people who respect me, continued Moreno, who spoke only Spanish and hid his face from the video camera's view for the duration of the interview. Chicken shit. I mean, guy comes into the country just spouting all kinds of nonsense. Literally, he's got shenanigans for days coming out of, his, out of his mouth. You know what's interesting is that his TikTok account got shut down, but his Facebook and Instagram, he's still monetized on those. He's still making money. Yeah, scumbag. I miss my entire life. I miss my freedom, he cried. Well, maybe you shouldn't have done some of that illegal stuff. Maybe you shouldn't have come into the country illegally. I don't know, just throwing out ideas here, but um, you get what you deserve. And in your case, you deserve jail. You deserve to be deported, whatever it may happen to you. With Moreno out of the frame, the camera showed inmates in blue-striped jumpsuits 
sitting at five silver, silver metal tables through a glass window. At one point during the video visit, five scowling inmates looked in his direction with some indecipherably shouting at him. <laughs> I bet he is not. Maybe he is popular in jail. Maybe he's popular in the shower facility. He's not a big guy. He's small. Small. What is happening? Moreno could be heard muttering to himself. Well, yeah, they're choosing which one of them is going to make you um, their girlfriend. That's what they're doing. Oh, yeah. Missing your freedom now? Not so much. Yeah, yeah. I'm afraid they're going to kill me. They're coming for my life. Anyone, he said. It's kind of what happens when you get sent to jail, isn't it? And you're at the mercy of whoever's ever in there. And if you set a bunch of stuff, 500,000 followers on TikTok, you're going to be a known quantity. And this guy is. So that's why he's doing this, right? Ah, oh, they're coming for me. Moreno has been in touch with his wife, Veronica Torres, since he's been locked up and insisted the Post contact her so she could charge an undisclosed sum for a good interview with him. The Post does not pay for interviews. <laughs> Guy's trying to work the system even when he doesn't need to, right? Doesn't need to. Immigrant and Customs Enforcement Fugitive Operations officers called Moreno, Cuff Moreno in Columbus, Ohio on March 29th. Just, you know, just about two weeks ago, nearly two years after he and Torres illegally crossed the southern border into Eagle Pass, where I was, where a lot of the stuff that's going down um, is happening. He was allowed to stay in the country in a Biden administration approved parole scheme. But parole, that's that parole. It's meant for something other than what the Biden administration is using it for. It's meant on a short-term basis to get people into the country, like people being displaced from Afghanistan, people being displaced from Ukraine. You know, release them on, on parole. But instead, we've just made that basically, write their name down on a piece of paper, give them parole, give them a court date, let them go. It's been mass, mass parole. And that's how we end up with the 11 million people in the country. Most of them just completely illegal. And so many of them that aren't going to have a chance to actually get asylum here in the United States. They just, they don't qualify. But they came anyway because they heard, hey, why not? Right now is a good chance. Let's, let's give it a chance. You know, what could go, what could go wrong? Staying in Venezuela? That's a real crapshoot as well. Um, but then he failed to appear for required check-ins with immigration officers, according to ICE, back in 2022. Not shocking. How many of these illegals are not going to show for the hearings? Why should they? They're doing just fine. They're, 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 they're doing their thing, getting all kinds of subsidies. Nobody knows who they really are. Right? State of Washington, my state here, you don't have to have a citizenship, citizenship to get a professional license. You want to be a hairdresser? You want to be a bail bondsman? You want to be a tattoo artist? Ah, no citizenship required anymore. Just, uh, just give them your name, whomever you are, and away you go. It's wild. The Venezuelan national could also face federal firearm charges, according to sources and in internal federal documents reviewed, uh, reviewed by the Post this week. They'll get him on something. And he made enough of a stink. He made enough comments. Somebody's going to get him for something, right? A series of March 14 videos still on Moreno's Instagram account show him holding and showing fire gun, firearms in a gun store. I looked at those. Yeah. Uh, would he be able to purchase one? And asking his followers, which do you like best? Moreno insisted he was thrown into the clink because of his inflammatory social media videos. Well, you were saying stuff that was illegal. You were citing people to basically squat. And that is illegal. It's just like how you came into the United States illegally. It's illegal. It's against the law. And ironically, vowed to use the First Amendment to fight any charges. I'm going to fight them with the First Amendment. Freedom of speech. I can say whatever I want. Well, you can to a certain point. When you start spouting off illegal things, people are going to take notice. And that's what you've had happen. If a Moreno commits a crime or something, then they would be right. But it's because of my work. This is so unfair. Social media is my job. Social media is how you happen to get paid. Social media is not your job because you are a loser. So if I want to say something now, I can't say it. We become an oppressive country instead of a free country where we can express whatever is in our hearts. The United States was created to be that, 
not to oppress. Yeah, but what you're doing, you're not just saying, hey, I like butterflies. You're encouraging people to do illegal acts. And that's kind of the difference there between somebody who just wants to be part of the good old USA and, you know, encourage others to work hard and achieve that American dream. You weren't really doing that. No, no, you were encouraging people to um, commit all kinds of shenanigans, illegal ones at that. Previously, Moreno posted videos to TikTok and Instagram encouraging other migrants to come to the U.S., where he said that they didn't have to work because they could make more money from begging on the streets and collecting government handouts. He's probably not wrong. But, you know, when you're talking about doing something illegal, yeah, you get what you pay for, right? You get what you pay for. And this guy's in jail. It'll be interesting to see how long he stays in there. With his ICE charge, I mean, he could, he could just get deported. And, you know, enough people saw his, his videos and said, get that guy out of here. Get him the F out. We don't want him here. I didn't cross the Rio Grande to work like a slave. Can you believe he said that? He said the quiet part out loud. I didn't cross the Rio Grande to work like a slave. Okay, did you, work, did you cross to work at all? Because what you're doing right now is not working. You're making a living, but it's not working. Moreno said in one Instagram clip while he waved a stack of $100 bills in, in front of his face. He has listened to too much rap music. That's what's wrong. Now, there's so many other things that are wrong as well. But yeah, you've always got the rappers with big stacks of $100,000 bills. And you're like, okay, what's the point you're making that you carry around money to be a target, maybe possibly financial mismanagement? Because who carries that much cash around? You're not making any interest on your money. You're just waving it around like a jackass. Um, okay, all right, but whatever, we'll believe you. There's so many people out there like, that guy has a hundred, you know, stacks of hundreds. He's wealthy. I should listen to him. Oh, let's just watch all of his TikToks, right? In the same video, Moreno claimed to have enough money to support himself, Torres, and their daughter. I'm so sorry for that daughter. I'm so sorry for his wife. The guy's just an out-of-control loudmouth, and now he's in jail. He's like, I'm being persecuted. And their daughter, who was born in October, for at least 18 months without having to work. Guys put away that much money scamming the system, is what he's telling us. Scamming the system. The Venezuelan also called for his fellow countrymen to unite in support of the 15-year-old migrant who's accused of firing shots that injured a tourist in Times Square on February 8th. That's who we should be supporting. Some guy who's an illegal in the country shooting citizens of the United States. Oh, okay. We're going to support that guy. Hmm. All right. Well, okay. No, no, we're not. TikTok last week shut down Moreno's account, which had roughly 500,000 followers. People are so dumb, aren't they? They're so dumb. You're following this guy? This is who the, the guy that you're following? But his Instagram profile is still active and has more than 17,000 followers. He was late to the Instagram game, wasn't he? You can pull off a lot of nonsense on TikTok because people will watch, they'll literally watch anything on TikTok. Oh, dog's taking a crap. That's the greatest video I've ever seen. Oh, this is the best. The absolute best, right? Moreno vowed in March 17 Instagram video, yes, they closed my TikTok account, but I keep earning on Facebook and on Instagram. I won't earn the same, but I'm going to get my TikTok account back I'm going to keep earning money. TikTok will let anything go on, right? Social media personality insisted to the post that the person in his videos was just that, a fictional character. This is how he spins it. This is how he spins it. The person who is in my videos, my character, is not the same person as Leonel Moreno. I am a different person. Hmm. Okay. I mean, you're telling me that. You're identifying as that. That's the game we're playing here. You're identifying as somebody else, a different person. We can't confuse one with the other. We can't confuse my character with my real life. Um, I think ICE is going to say something different about that. When you come with the defense of, you know what? You know, this is just this. That's the, that's what Moreno says. I, myself, the husband and the, the uh, father, ah, I don't do that. kind of stuff. They're going to say, uh, no, you said it. That was you. It's on video. What a dumbass. I have a sarcastic, dark humor in my videos. That's my job. Lionel Moreno's is the opposite, he said. Although he refused to answer whether he personally believes in the disgraceful messages he spewed in his videos. 
Of course he does. Absolutely. Because he's all about scamming the system. So why wouldn't he encourage others to do exactly the same? His, his biggest problem is he got too big. 500,000 followers, too many people are watching him. Got too many eyeballs on him, right? One thing is Lieto Official, which means Official Lieto, his nickname in Spanish. And another thing is Lionel Moreno. That's all I can tell you. They are different things. Um, okay, so you, you got a nickname, and then you got your real name, and you're associating one with your real personality and one with this fictitious account. Son, you are full of crap. Any which way. Deport, deport, deport. Yeah, those are, those are my three recommendations for what should happen with this joker, right? So we've all been watching this guy. We've all been kind of seeing what's going on. He's in jail now. Does he get released on his own personal recognizance? I don't think so. I don't think that's happening anytime soon. I think this guy gets booted. But he's one of few that's going down this roadway because, hey, if you can monetize at 500000 on TikTok, you're going to make some money. You just need to keep your trap shut on, you know, coming out and saying just ridiculous things. That was this guy's biggest fault was getting caught, right? It was getting caught because he was saying just a whole bunch of illegal stuff that had no bearing in reality. I mean, his explanation of the basically adverse possession laws was so convoluted that and he, he's an illegal from Venezuela. So what did you expect, right? But that's why I, that, that's why, you know, I think it's important to cut down people who have these kind of accounts because they're literally dealing with fraud. But, you know, Facebook doesn't seem to care. YouTube cares. YouTube cuts stuff down from anything. But if you're on the right, yeah, you're going to have to jump through a lot more song and dance than somebody on the left that, um, that supports this kind of ridiculousness. That's just the day and age that we live in. So, yeah, this is kind of where we sit. This guy is in jail. Will he be deported? I don't know. I don't know. I sure hope so, though, right? Because then I'll have another podcast because he'll be, he'll be crying. He'll, you know, he'll have that snot hanging down from his nose. That was just a gross video. I was like, oh, could you, could you wipe your nose there, big guy? This is not a good look. This is horrible. This is terrible. All right, I'm going to wrap up this one. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Tristan, I'm going to do the outro now. So here we go. Thank you so much for watching this video. Love to have you subscribe. Love to have you hit the like button for this video. Do all that good stuff, and I will see you on the next one. Until then, bye for now. People on the live stream, don't go anywhere. We'll chat for a second. Somebody yelling in one of the adjacent offices. Let's see what you guys are talking about. <laughs> I heard many other Venezuelan immigrants were furious with him for giving them a bad reputation. Maybe they'll take care of him. That, that, that wouldn't be shocking, would it? No, it'd just be, you know, saving the taxpayer some money, wouldn't it? Yeah. Foreign trust account. They are mad that the con is getting broadcast. That is so true. The, moot, uh, the most noisy are the criminals. <laughs> Normal people don't have time for this crap. It's so true. It's like, what are you guys even doing? What are you? It's so crazy. 500,000. Yeah. Yeah. Can you believe that he got 500,000? I mean, I get, yes. The answer is yes on TikTok. I think TikTok literally, now let's watch the guy's dog take a number two. It, it's just, it's so ridiculous what people will watch. People are starved for content. And then that goes for the same way when they come into the United States and they don't know they're going to follow some joker like this and actually think that he has some truth into what he's saying. So it's just absolutely crazy to kind of go down these roads of, um, uh, yeah, but this is, this is what we're doing and this is a good idea. Throw the guy out. We need to get to the 2024 elections as soon as we can. Cut down on some of this crap. Trump would have called this guy out by name, wouldn't he? He would have said, this is a very bad man, very bad man. Came in illegal. We need to deport him. He would have said that straight up. 
All right, guys, I'm getting hungry. I'm going to go eat some lunch. Thanks so much for all of you being here. I'll catch up with you in the next one. We're going to go live again on Thursday. So thanks again for being here and uh, being for the whole live stream. I'll catch up with you guys in the next one. Bye for now.